Alright, this video is going to talk about composition of functions. Um, we are going to reserve the conversation about finding the domain of the composition of functions for a later video. This is just about the composition itself. So, uh, composition of functions is where you take one function, let's say f of x is equal to 2x plus 5, um, and a second function, g of x, equals, let's make it x squared. And you're going to take and plug one into the other. So, composition of functions, the notation looks like f and then an open circle, read f of g of x. Now what this means is you're going to take f and use the g of x as the input. So what that means is we'll take my f of x function here, replace the x with the parentheses. So this is f of x, 2x plus 5. But instead of using x, we're going to use g of x. So g of x gets plugged in. And g of x is x squared. So then we simplify. So f of g of x equals 2x squared plus 5. That's not a 5. Let's try that again. Plus 5. Now, composition of functions is not commutative, meaning f of g of x is different than g of x of x, g of f of x. And let's see what that looks like. So we can take and do g of f of x, which can also be notated as g of f of x. Notice that it's the same order. If you've got the g of f of x notation, understand that the f of x here becomes the input into the g of x. So we take our g of x function this time, which is x squared. And we're going to replace that x with f of x. And f of x is 2x plus 5. We need to simplify. Now this follows our special case that we'll talk about in a different video. Uh, but if you remember from Algebra 2, that would become 4x squared plus 20x plus 25. Now, uh, let's just look at a different example. So if we've got, um, let's make it r of x equals x plus 1 and s of x equals 2x squared plus 3x. My r of s of x is going to be equal to r of s of x. So I start with my r function. r is x plus 1. And I'm going to plug in 2x squared plus 3x. So this gives me 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. My s of r of x is going to be s of r of x. So I take my s function, 2x squared plus 3x, and I plug in my r of x. Which would give me 2 times x plus 1 squared plus 3 times x plus 1. Simplifying, sorry I'm moving it over here, 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 1 
plus, we can distribute the 3, giving me 3x plus 3. And then simplifying again, so we would have 2x squared plus 4x plus that 3x gives me 7x. 2 times 1 is 2 plus that 3 gives me 5. So that is my S of R of X. We're going to do another example. And we're going to look at this one a little bit differently. So if we've got F of X equals, let's make it uh, just a couple simple linear uh, equations. F of X equals X minus 2 and G of X equals, let's just make it 2X. Now, if I wanted to find f of g of x, uh, this is what we've done the last couple examples. I'm going to take my f of x function, x minus 2, and plug in my g of x function. So this gives me 2x minus 2. Now, if I wanted to plug in a value. That didn't work out well. Let's try this again. f of g of, let's say, 3. Now, what I would do is I could plug it into my composition here. So I could make it 2 times 3 minus 2 or 4. Or, this means f of g of 3. So I can find out what is g of 3. g of 3 is going to be 2x plugging in that 3. That gives me 6. So then I take this 6 and plug it into my f of x function. So this becomes f of 6 plugging it in to my f of x function here, this gives me x minus 2, or 4. You notice you get the same answer. So if you're given two functions and you're just looking for an input, it's almost, uh, it, it saves time if you're just going to plug it into those two functions. If you need to do it more than once, um, then show the composition of the functions. Uh, let's do one more. So f of x equals, let's make this one x minus 1 quantity squared. And g of x is equal to x plus 1. So, we're going to do f of g of x. We're going to do g of f of x. I also want to see what f of g of negative 1 is and g of f of uh, let's make it 3. So, f of g of x. Again, this means f of g of x. This notation to me seems a little bit clearer. You can see that the g of x is going to be the input into the f of x function. So, I'm going to replace all of the x's with parentheses in my f of x function and plug in my g of x. Now notice here you've got x plus 1 minus 1, so the 1's go away and we're just left with the x squared. If we go the other way around, g of f of x, I'm going to take my g of x function, x plus 1, and replace it with x minus 1 squared. Now we shouldn't leave it this way, we need to simplify, so that would be x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus 1, or 
x squared, sorry, I'm running out of room, x squared minus 2x plus 2. So that would be your answer. Now, two ways to do f of g of negative 1. First way is to take my f of g here and plug it in. So let's do that. So x squared, plugging in a negative 1, we get positive 1. Or we can take my g of negative 1, which would make it negative 1 plus 1 or 0, and plug that into my f of x function. Now plugging it into x minus 1 squared, I get negative 1 times negative 1 or positive 1, which is what I was expecting here. I can do the same thing with um, g of f of 3. Let's go ahead and do this. So um, sorry, get another page. Uh, g of f of 3. Let's plug the 3 into the f of x. So we would get x minus 1 squared. We're plugging in the 3. So we get 2 squared or 4. Then we take that and we plug it into our g of x function. x plus 1. Plugging it in here, we get the 5. Now, this is something new. It's going to take practice, which I will be happy to provide for you. Um, check out the next video where we talk about finding the domain of a composition of functions.